There's no one on this planet that can stop me. Send them all. As you wish. It's been a while since anyone's made the world this nervous. Black Adam managed to handily tear down Shabak. Shabak is actually like a demonic version of Shazam or Black Adam. Shabak, Shazam, and Black Adam. Their powers were all granted by the gods. Because the gods who gave Black Adam and Shazam their powers were not the same person. So the initial S in Shazam stands for a different god. But for the character of Shabak in the film, he was originally an ordinary man. After being empowered by a group of demons, he becomes the next Shabak. This is similar to what Black Adam experienced 500 years ago in Kandak. The most important thing in the movie is the eternal lore. It's the DC equivalent of Vibranium. If this reminds you of the Spaceman Apocalypse, then you're not the only one who feels this way. Eternal Metal is a term that originated in DC Comics, but it sounds like it's from the Space Superman Apocalypse. Eternal Metal in the DC Universe is just pieces of eternal ore that have fallen to Earth. It's what the slaves had to mine in Kandak in the movie. In the Marvel Universe Vibranium isn't magical, but you have to take it the way Marvel intended it to be taken. It's very rare, it's very powerful, and it only exists in one specific place. At that time in history, the King of Kandak forced his slaves, including Black Adam and his family, to mine the eternal ore. He used the ore to make the crown of Shabak, and Shabak is based on a comic strip. He was the villain of Shazam in the comics, but the King of Kandak wanted to use his crown to gain the power of evil and thus become a god. But all the demons who granted him powers or superpowers simply used him as a conduit to free themselves from the trapped underworld in the normal DC Universe dimension. Although the demons in the movie are trying to use the character of Shabak to open the portal, but Shabak himself doesn't do that. He's like a puppet for the demons. But on this day, the descendant of the previous king has done what the previous king failed to do before he was avenged by Black Adam. His descendant became an evil Shabak and opened the portal after gaining demonic powers. So Black Adam had to kill him. After Black Adam killed Shabak, he vowed to become the guardian of Kandak, just like in the comics. It was also his son's vision for Kandak. There is a statue of what looks like Black Adam in the film. But DC revealed that the statue was actually his son. His son used the power of Shazam, which he received from the sorcerer, to overthrow the king and free the people. But after his son's death, Kandak still suffers oppression by different powers to this day. So later on Black Adam says he will follow in his son's footsteps and fulfill his son's dream of a better world and try to make Kandak a better place. And in the post-credits scene, DC has his future lover Adriana's son, Amantamaz, wearing a red cloak. Apparently, this Superman cameo in the end credits sets the stage. It's as if Amantamaz is going to be a Justice League fan. His room is filled with merchandise about the Justice League. He carries a bag of Justice League comics around with him in the movie. And all the eggs in his room about the Justice League. All the comics, all the artwork, all the figurines, are all from our real-life Justice League merchandise. Like the DC Comics, DC artwork, and the Batman artwork in gyms and the posters of Superman. We can buy them all in shops. It's kind of like a hodgepodge of Justice League merchandise within DC. The designs are all based on comics, artwork that we can buy. DC also has eggs for those who want steel bones to return in the future. There are some comics in Amantamath's backpack that are of steel bones, so it's like DC is telling us steel bones still exists in the DC universe. And of course, there's Sea King, Wonder Woman. There's even something from The Flash. It's currently being said that DC will follow The Flash movie, reimagine the character again. But of all the Justice League eggs, a lot of the jokes about Justice League merchandise most of them focus on Superman. For example, the Justice Society gave Black Adam the red cake. When Black Adam is in Amantamat's room looking around at Justice League merchandise, he had no idea what it was because he woke up 5,000 years later. So he doesn't know about the Justice League, doesn't know the characters, and he doesn't know what any of this stuff is. But he keeps on destroying Superman's artwork and figures, and even blew a Superman poster through the chest with magic lightning. But we all know why he did it. 
Apparently, it's an ambush, alluding to Johnson's previously heavily promoted Black Adam vs. Superman movie. He had said they were working on it, as if they were actually going to be responsible for the Superman cameo scene at the end of the film. At the end Amon Tomaz stands with his mother Adriana Tomaz in a red cape. A Black Adam said he didn't think his name was modern enough, because for most of the film, they only called him Adam. No one really called him Black Adam. Also because Amon Tomaz is Black Adam's son. Adriana Tomaz is his wife in the afterlife. So throughout the film, especially at the end, DC sets up the idea that Black Adam will later share his superpowers with his family. It would also grant them the power of Shazam. This is just like Billy Bassett did in the first Shazam movie. If you're not a longtime reader of the Black Adam comics, then you definitely don't know that. Black Adam gave some of his powers to Adriana Tomaz in the comics. And Amon Tomaz is Black Adam. Adam's nephew in the comics, but in this movie it's his son. This could have something to do with some of the plot points that DC is hiding in the movie. And as Johnson said when he was promoting the film, did you know that Adriana Tomas is a very interesting character, but he doesn't have superpowers yet, so he's going to get powers in the future. Like I just said, and that's going to be a big twist in the future. But because most of this movie is based on the comic book plot, so DC will do a future plot where Amon and Adrian Adamez get superpowers. But that would take some things off track, which leads to Superman getting involved. It could be that some of the havoc caused by Amon Tomas when using Black Adam's superpowers, getting Superman involved. Black Adam 2 will have a lot of Superman versus Black Adam scenes. It could start with Black Adam giving Amon superpowers. Then there's a Captain America Civil War kind of thing. Amon is kind of like a Darkseid version of Tobin. Kind of like a Captain America character. So the general plot for the future is. Superman comes in here and wants to know what's going on. But Amon goes crazy and uses his powers to try and stop Superman. And Black Adam is very angry because Superman made a move on his son. Now we go back to the end of the Black Adam movie. After defeating Shabak, the Justice Society took off for home. Amanda Waller who is an agent of the government, sends a drone to Black Adam's palace, because in the first part of the movie, Black Adam and some other supernaturals escaped from his underwater prison. So she tells Black Adam, it's okay if you don't want to stay in my prison, but now Kandak is your prison. If you try to walk out, I will send someone more powerful to stop you. I will use all the help I can get. He was actually referring to the more powerful characters in the Justice League. This is the reason there are so many Justice League eggs in the early part of the movie. It also makes us think that it's an interconnected universe. He could have called the Justice League, but the reason he sent the Justice Society first is because if things get worse, it would take a bigger favor for him to call someone more powerful. And when Boulder Johnson has been promoting this movie for years, he's been using the slogan that he's the most powerful man on the planet as a slogan. He was very careful to say he was the most powerful character on the planet. And Amanda Waller's final response to him was, I can send people who don't belong on this planet. Then Black Adam giggles at him and destroys the drone. And then Superman Henry Cavill descends from the fog. Meanwhile, John Williams' classic Superman theme song plays. Superman said it's been a long time. No one has terrified the world like this. We should talk. And Henry Cavill, here in his classic Superman costume, if you look closely, you might also notice. His hair is also in the classic Superman curl. It's all different from the previous films, and I think this is the first time DC has used John Williams' classic Superman theme song in a new DC movie, because it's always been. Even when we see Superman return in this League Schneider cut it's always with Hans Lonesome's Superman music, and then back to the cast list. According to what Johnson is saying, he's going to set up Superman vs. Black Adam in the sequel like I did in my early predictions earlier. The reason for this is to do with his son Amon gaining powers. Amon's use of his powers would accidentally cause some international disaster that would involve Superman. But DC would have us believe that, that their respective actions were justified. For example, the reason they're fighting each other is because they're fighting each other. So Superman is going after Black Adam because Black Adam wants to protect his son. And Superman wants to protect the rest of the world. So all the Justice League eggs and Superman's cameo at the end are meant to foreshadow Black Adam and the Justice League in a future movie. It's like Black Adam will have a family and friends group instead of Superman being alone. But that's for later. I think the first thing we'll see is Black Adam vs Superman. And Zachary Levi, who plays Shazam, has also said, the next time a Justice League movie is made, Shazam will be joining the team. So DC will be using the characters from the Black Adam and Shazam movies in the Justice League series. But this will only be possible if DC first uses Black Adam in Black Adam 2. Black Adam vs. 
Superman, and Black Adam versus this league. It also corresponds to what Johnson mentioned in his pitch earlier last year. He said that the hierarchy of power in the DC universe would change. Well, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.